Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Welcome. Uh, it's launch day for the new load, 21st of June 2024. Um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Ian for a welcome message and uh, we'll get proceedings underway. Good morning, everyone. Uh, how many do we have on the webinar today? Can't see the number. I think Can't we see the see number side. I'll get an update from uh, from our uh, coordinator, Alberto. Okay, and we're recording. And we're recording. All right. Well, um, welcome uh, to all of you in the community. Um, seven long years and counting here at Load, and uh, we're pretty uh, excited. Uh, first day of uh, summer uh, here in the. Um, Northern Hemisphere, and uh, we're very, very pleased to uh, have all of you joining us today. I believe that we have over 400 registered for the meeting today. Uh, so welcome uh, wherever you are in the world. Um, uh, we're grateful that you've uh, taken the time out of your busy schedule to be here with us today. So um, for my part, I, I just wanted to uh, mention a few things to the community that are aligned with our uh, original mandate and the purpose for the load project and I think it's important that the um, the reasons why uh, we're doing this and why the load community has uh, engaged and invested themselves so deeply into the development of this protocol um, you know is is top of mind for the meeting today what you're gonna see is a suite of uh, technology, a technical pillars, smart contract infrastructure, and um, a three token system that is um, nearing its completion uh, from the original design. And so I just wanted to touch on that. Um, there are, um, there's obviously a purpose to what um, has been designed and there's also been the mandate itself. And so seven years ago, the load community came together around and formed a mandate to restore silver and gold to the monetary system utilizing modern technology and blockchain. And, um, but that doesn't speak very much to the purpose. That, that really is just uh, what is the operation that was required in order to um, accomplish uh, the mandate. And so the, the mandate, um, it has, um, it is an ongoing process. But the purpose uh, of the platform uh, is to uh, provide independence and freedom, freedom and choice, freedom to access silver and gold as money, freedom to get out of the banking system, freedom to send, spend, and store uh, your money, uh, send it to anyone, anywhere, at any time, has been the original uh, purpose, and and you may. Uh, all of you may remember some of the videos. In fact, um, the third video that was done after we did imagine and experience the freedom was the freedom video and then the switch video. And so that's largely uh, the reasons that we're here. The purpose um, that we just outlined, which is independence and freedom from the financial system, has certain requirements and the requirements are that you know whoever is going to build this has to be um, determined uh, committed uh, have a little bit of courage and of course patience and so all of you that have been here since 2017 have been patient and we thank you for that uh, this has not been easy but what you're going to see today is the framework for greater liquidity um for not only for yourselves but to um, um to to uh, provide the framework for um increasing numbers of users and opening the platform uh to uh, a worldwide audience and so we're also going to share the roadmap going forward and we're going to spend a few minutes reflecting on all of the achievements that that often aren't seen uh, by the community, um, they they come out often in in an announcement here and there, but when you put them all together, it's quite significant. And so uh, that's all I wanted to say. I wanted to, to 
to welcome you and thank you for your patience, for your commitment, and for of course, uh, the determination to um, you know help us uh, help the community accomplish the mandate and to um, you know roll out what the purpose for the platform is. And of course, the purpose is freedom. Thanks, Ian. Um, should we uh, run through uh, achievements to this point and what we've done uh, over the end of 2023 and uh, 2024? Um, load down structure, uh, a vote smart contract has been put in place, vesting smart contract is, is ready to go, rewards generator ready to run out six times, uh, 6x on the rewards, automation, um, that's the RG, that's the, the generator, vesting, the staking, LTC, LT, the 10 split. Um, we can go into that a little bit further, very important because of our price point and for crypto communities. Seven revenue streams, new white paper, new branding for the load three and the wallet. Um, updates to the audit from Certec, Simplex partnership for payments, chain link pricing, Oracle, um, by Ava Labs, the care uh, safety contract. First DAO with a governance wallet. Um, that's the first in the world. Um, the Syscoin changeover to Rolex uh, on the layer two. Uh, load Hyperledger to LTC, the, the shutdown of the Hyperledger. Uh, load three, multiple DEXs uh, is listed. Uh, load is listed on multiple DEXs. Uh, claim on the spot, AGX AUX. Um, 10,000 LT to unlock benefits. Um, sunsetting of the members portal, taking away our uh, last vestige of uh, centralization for, for load, uh, new load uh, three, LOD3.fi website, which I think we can run through uh, a little later. Um, update, le updated legal opinions, super important legal opinions for North America, uh, standing legal opinions for, for Europe. Proof of reserve, massive. Um, it's uh, three words, but it's uh, so important because obviously it links us with Brinks and it gives us credibility that there is silver and gold uh, backing our assets in, in the marketplace and a market uh, partnership for uh, the card program. Um, I think we should just jump straight in to the, into the deck here at this point, uh, Hum, and then we'll come back uh, and fill in uh, after that with the questions. Welcome everybody. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great to, to be in front of, uh, the, the, uh, the group here. Um, we're really excited about what's to come with, uh, load, uh, with genuine, with the two, two, uh, opportunities that you guys are, are, uh, have been involved in for, for quite some time now. Um, if we can skip through the, the next slide, um, that, Perfect. So, so nothing's really changed on what load is. Load is still a permissionless, open, a public, uh, gold money system, gold and silver money system. Um, we haven't changed that. We haven't changed our mission, vision, values. Uh, we are still developing our platform uh, as associated with uh, the same values that founded our platform. What's changed over the years is the technology, and in a massive way, the technology has matured to the point where we are now able to, rather than have to build custom infrastructure, there's a lot of infrastructure available to us. So from a scalability perspective, we can we can now um, implement, uh, implement technology that wasn't possible when we started this project. And that's what's changed. And because of that, and because of changes in regulations that uh, we have to adhere to, uh, changes in market appetites, we've pivoted as a project. And we're pivoting to a model that we feel provides a lot more value to uh, load token holders. There's uh, additional revenue streams. There's there's um, uh, new uh, contract, new smart contracts being launched. There's a big focus on providing infrastructure to load going forward. And so um, what you're going to see is that we still have the same tokens. We're still supported on Avalanche. We plan to go multi-chain with other to with the AGX and AUX tokens, but nothing's really changing here. So we can move through. Um, we can move through to the next slide. Um, I think this one is Augusto is going to go through uh, the the glossary of terms and then we can proceed into the mission vision values. Uh, we can go through that section quick and then we can go into what's new. Great. Th thanks, Mark. And, and the reason why 
th this reads, um, yeah. you can read through this very quickly, but there is a, a, a ton of intellectual property here that has been exclusive, exclusively developed by Augusto uh, for this. So th thanks, Augusto. I'll turn it over. Thanks very much, guys. Um, what, we, what we would like to explain about this glossary is, is in line with what Mark has just mentioned, which is the state of technology uh, has, has now arrived to a maturity point where we can develop what we want in terms of, uh, in terms of performance, right? In terms of the protocol performance on chain. Right. Uh, if if you recall, uh, everything is uh, everything load stands for is based on three tokens, right? AUX and AGX, which are uh, asset pack tokens, and the load uh, community and governance token, right? But on top of that, now the state of technology allows us to um, develop uh, a certain set of um, smart contracts that allow us to. Um, perform in a more dynamic and seamless way and less cost, less costly, right? For instance, um, on top of these three tokens that I, that I have already mentioned, we are going to uh, deploy uh, a reward generator, right? Which will stand for a mechanism where users will be able to place their load token in exchange for um for um uh, for fee for for rewards right um as 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 mark mentioned the the different revenue streams that we are taking into account will be deposited into the reward generator for load stakers to claim those rewards right uh, this piece of technology was not possible until uh, until uh, certainly so, um, close in time, right, to now, uh, until recently. Uh, uh, if you figure when, when if, if we talk about this in 2017, 2018, this, this was not possible, right? Now we are implementing, implementing a seamless way for load stakers to claim rewards, right, uh, in real time, right? And we are implementing a governance protocol for big holders to place, uh, to, to place uh, improvement proposals and for everyone to vote on those improvement proposals on the protocol, right? So these uh, this two pillars where we are uh, placed uh, we, what, we, that, that are holding the, the, the protocol, that will be holding the protocol, are uh, truly new in terms of technology development, right? Uh, on chain, that that is on on the blockchain, right? Um, also, uh, we are uh, making a, 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 two other uh, significant uh, uh, feature improvements when we talk about uh, paying with with crypto using a credit or debit card, right? Um, <coughs> um, and and also uh, a, a potential money market that we are going to uh, deploy in the very next few months, right? Um, you as as of now, you now hold a AUX and AGX um, as a means of payment and also as a means of storing gold and silver value, right? But the money market that we intend to launch based on the current state of technology will allow you also to lend or to borrow those assets, right? At market rates. Um, and you will also be able to fund uh, credit and debit cards to buy services and goods, right? With the, with the, the goodwill uh, card funding contract, right? Uh, that's that's uh, the core of what we are developing in terms of technology right now. Um, also, and uh, in, in answer to those that are holding uh, low token classic tokens, right, LTCs, we are finishing off 
the implementation of the migration from load hyperledger into load avalanche by deploying the vesting contract uh, soon uh, june 21st right this will allow you guys to um to 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 claim your load tokens on avalanche in exchange for your ltc balances right um on top of all of this we are also working in the next few months with what's called the proof of reserve and the proof of redemption processes, right? Uh, we are working uh, with with some uh, providers in order to guarantee to 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 deploy an on-chain system where you will be able to check uh, the, the the backup of all of your AUX and AGX, right? And we will establish a, a redemption system for you to redeem your tokens for actual as for for the actual physical assets if you want so as well um uh, also we are working uh, as you see for instance we are mentioning save here save uh, we are mentioning this um because we are also making improvements over uh the the liquidity provide the, the, the liquidity providers on uh, on the Avalanche network and the way the assets are traded on the Avalanche network. So this is basically the core uh, value proposal of what we are working in terms of technology, right? Uh, we, we, are, we are working nonstop in terms of delivering uh, technology according to the latest um, according to the, the latest um, uh, releases that we see in, in, in the space, right? And, and according also to the highest, the highest standards in terms of security. Thank you. Thank you, Augusto. Um, uh, Mark, if you could uh, continue and hum, if you would like to jog it along. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah, so I mean, what is load? Nothing's changed. We are a collective community organized and formed to restore silver and gold into the monetary system. That is not changed. That is not going to change. Um, what, the way in which we deliver this is going to change. And so we are forming a decentralized autonomous organization, as Augusto had mentioned. This DAO allows for us, I mean, from for one, uh, unlike the current shareless infrastructure uh, that, that's been created for the Anstalts, which becomes very, very difficult to partner with third with, with uh, any sort of groups from financial institutions that provide us critical infrastructure to even onboarding clients, uh, they don't get it. And so we're, we're moving to a DAO and we're splitting up um, certain aspects of the, the, the group. Um, and, and now this DAO will provide, as Augusto mentions, the ability for large token holders to be able to submit proposals that can be actioned, voted against by the larger community. And, and so this is the big pivot, is that we are going to be um, moving, rebranding uh, our, our, our platform to load with a three. Um, that three stands for the Web3. Uh, and and uh, we, we plan to, uh, to provide more uh, in the lines of uh, say to token holders uh, and even allow for large token holders to, to participate if they want to put their name forward with a proposal associated with some of the tranches that you'll see where allocated uh, tokens are going to be have to have to be um, supplied to support operations. If we want to skip through to the next one. Um, so none of this has changed again either. So why restore gold and silver? You all know this story. Stability, hedge against economic and uncertainty and corruption. Uh, it enhances uh, accessibility and security um, through digital ownership rather than physical ownership. And we want to provide continuous and improved utility, allowing for our protocol to support the ability for this gold and silver to be used uh, outside of our closed the, the 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 protocol and in into the uh, traditional fiat infrastructure via payments. Um, now, going after the mainstream payment integrations and trying to go after the 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 world as our target market is a bit ambitious when it comes to trying to market a business to consumer product. Um, 
we are we are really focused on providing uh, value to our token holders by providing them the ability uh, in the next little little bit to be able to uh, spend uh, anywhere with their token supply. Uh, going after payments at a broader broader scale, um, global payments is a, is a is a bigger endeavor, and will be kind of pushed from a prioritization perspective to allow for us to prioritize uh, allowing load to be uh, AGX and AUX to be used as payments via our credit card infrastructure. Uh, and on to the next slide. Uh, we're same, same, same issues that we're solving uh, for nothing's changed here. Reliance on unstable fiat is what we're trying to, uh, to uh, depeg, allowing people to have a choice. Um, providing uh, providing options for those that are vulnerable economically, uh, and our solutions aim to provide access to secure precious metals in a digital format that can be used for daily use, um, providing stability and inclusivity. Um, we do plan to provide payment infrastructure. Uh, we do pro plan to provide um, uh, to to help these impoverished nations. Um, first things first, we have to we have to get these tokens uh, trading, uh, and we've got to get liquidity on these on, on our tokens. And we've got to um, uh, where can I see how many area? I, I just saw read a note for me, and sorry everybody. Um, and and so so the credit card program is is for first and foremost uh, that the lowest hanging fruit for us by by far and so that is that is where we're prioritized. Next slide. Um, yeah, so same ecosystem except for what you're going to see here is that we're bringing in some new features and functionalities. The first is the DAO. Um, the decentralized autonomous organization, and then what we're bringing in is staking, vesting, and our RGen or rewards generator. Um, we're going to go through these individually. So this is just an intro slide to introduce vesting, staking, rewards generators. We move to the next, please. Um, and then when we look at the rewards, uh, you'll be able to earn rewards, not just in AGX, AUX. You'll be able to reward, earn rewards and load AGX, AUX, and USDC, depending on where those rewards come from. The direct rewards will come from the, 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 the revenues that are earned in those tokens and then distributed to a smart contract. There are now six times more rewards or six, six times more reward sources uh, than there were previously. Previously, we just had the, the, and if we move to the next slide, previously we just had the spot plus reward uh, that was that was to be provided. Um, but what we're looking at now is a spot plus, spot under, uh, redemption fees. Uh, there are arbitrage opportunities with our new infrastructure, as well as money market opportunities. Uh, transaction fees that are collected from transactions through wallet infrastructure, as well as card program fees associated with the card program. We will be introducing genuine in a second in a second deck here at right after this one. Uh, genuine is providing some of this now. Some of these uh, so genuine will essentially and load will have a client. Uh, relationship with Gen so load will have a client relationship with genuine genuine is really going to be pur purpose built to provide critical core infrastructure um, required by large financial institutions and as a byproduct we, we we are able to extend that to load uh, allowing for load to have access to the infrastructure that genuine's building uh, and the support uh, that genuine's genuine's uh, provides uh, if we can move move on and Humberto, that is the uh, in the mass the customer deck will be the next one. Um, so when when we look at the uh, re rewards generator, we look at where some of this funding needs to come from uh, and or needs to go. So so all of those revenue sources don't only get paid to stakers um, who stake because without that we have no liquidity, we have no operations, and we have no ecosystem growth. So we're going to be allocating thirty percent of that revenue to the stakers. That will be self claimed. That will allow for them that, that as long as you're staking your tokens, you will be entitled to those those rewards, uh, and you will claim when you feel like it uh, and they will continue to accrue in a smart contract uh, a a until you until the user claims those those assets um, 
we need to fund liquidity. One of the biggest challenges that we've got here is the fact that there's no trading volume on our tokens, and that costs a lot of money to bring trading volume in. Uh, a large centralized exchange could be half a million dollars to integrate and seed liquidity against. A, a, a decentralized exchange, you're looking at seeding tens of thousands on the USDC side and tens of thousands on the uh, on the uh, AGX, AUX, and load side. So when you start taking into account the fact that we've got three tokens that all need that and every single exchange and decentralized exchange, centralized exchange that, that, that we support needs seeded liquidity, we need to fund it and it needs to come from somewhere. And we don't have that. And that's the reason why we're having hard times with uh, with volume today. Um, we also have uh, operations which need to be taken into consideration uh, to, and the, as well as ecosystem growth. And ecosystem growth is one of two things. Now in blockchain, I've been in this space for a long time, worked for a lot of different protocols. In order to adopt, get adopted into the ecosystem, you need to pay to play. You need to buy your way in, in a lot of cases. And that means just simple integrations with our tokens into third party infrastructure on the decentralized finance spectra spectrum uh, it costs money for those companies to onboard and to implement we need to have a tranche of funds to be able to uh integrate uh into the broader web3 infrastructure and then on top of that we need to market and so uh without without a marketing budget and without an ecosystem growth strategy uh, projects don't necessarily succeed and so uh, this is this is where the total funds from all of those rewards will be allocated uh, and we also plan to shore up uh the the various providers to be able to start doing this right away um, with a tranche of tokens initially uh, from from supply if we can move on and we'll, we'll go into that here in detail um so the, the next slide here is the load generator and the vote tokens. So the generators, is, this will allow for you to stake your, your, your tokens into a rewards pool, self-claim rewards pool we've been talking about here. Um, and this, when you stake into this contract, you will be able to vote on governance. If you stake enough tokens, you will also be able to uh, submit proposals. And this is almost like submitting a contract and you could provide a service either market on the marketing side, you could provide a service on the operations side, and you would be able to put your, put your proposal in that would be voted on by all token holders that have staked their tokens to either this or the next contract, which we'll go through in a second, which is the money market contract. Um, and so each token you've got, uh, that's the, each load token will provide you with one vote token. Those are non-transferable. These tokens have no value. They, they, they allow for you to vote um, and exercise your vote um, with your total load token supply. Next slide. Now the care module is a little different. The care module is lending and borrowing. So there's a solution or a technology provider out there called Aave. And Aave is a, a very successful money market in this space. Uh, and we are going to be looking at forking their code base and implementing the ability to provide uh, low, AGX, AUX, low token holders, uh, the ability to both stake tokens uh, for for uh, shoring up the, the, the kind of, buyer of last resort against this lending and borrowing as well as to be able to provide their tokens to to be able to be used as collateral and borrow against those tokens and so um this this contract uh, essentially it further integrates us into web3 this is a decentralized finance application that we plan to build and integrate into the application that will provide lending borrowing functionality essentially next slide um <clears throat> we're relaunching new wallet uh or the, the wallet with a new new skin um in time we will probably look to see if uh, the, the genuine infrastructure can support uh, a future load wallet but in the interim we've got a governance wallet that we've developed this governance wallet will provide the ability to interact with uh our either genuine's apis or so that you can offer um, uh, payments infrastructure, essentially the card program directly into this wallet. It will also support the uh, additional features that are coming, which is the lending, the borrowing, the money market side of things, as well as the voting uh, mechanism. So this will be a governance wallet. This will be focused on uh, providing uh, the operations for load um, and will enable load token holders, AGX token holders and AUX token holders to be able to interact with load. Next slide. When we look at the, so so as you guys know, there's gonna be a, I, I think 
people have been notified, but we are splitting the tokens 10 to one. This is not a dilution event. This is a split. Everybody, the, the total value of your tokens will remain unchanged when once the split is made. There is a, a, a very big reason why we're doing this. And the reason is because we are alienating a huge number of uh, crypto enthusiasts who are uh, interested in tokens that are under a dollar or even under a penny uh, by having a, a token that's worth uh, eight bucks. Um, there's, we're, we're partnering with groups like Shiba Inu, um, who, who have a token that, that, um, uh, likely won't ever even reach a penny, um, which, which, which is, uh, uh, mental so It's a psychological thing in the web three space. And so, so from these tokens, we know that 260 uh, after the split, uh, there will be 77 million tokens out of the total supply of which 26,000 are in circulating supply. Some of the service providers will be provided with some tokens, uh, genuine to provide long-term technology and to support long-term uh, and, and essentially to, to help with the initial implementation and, and of, the, of the infrastructure that it's providing um, to, to load. We've got Load Switzerland from an operations perspective and then all of these other uh, tranches will be uh, will will essentially go to the DAO and allow and enable be and be have some of them as you can see here have already been tranched to uh, to support specific initiatives um, and then the rest is up to the DAO to vote on so the DAO is going to vote on where marketing growth where the liquidity funds going so these are all going to be decisions that the community makes. Um, but these tokens are strategically allocated to various different initiatives like the reserve fund, the development fund, the liquidity fund, uh, because they are required in order for us to sustain our growth. Um, and, and so this is this is a slide that I'm sure there will be questions around. I'm happy to answer those uh, in, in, in shortly here. Uh, next slide. So the transition to the DAO. So why? I mean, we're trying to build a decentralized framework that uh, allows for us to operate into a in a well-defined structure DAOs are readily accepted um they are their uh legal frameworks in different countries to allow for us to operate to open up bank accounts to to it's essentially a DAO is like a non-profit and we can operate as a non-profit um getting access to uh in, to to uh infrastructure that we need in order to support uh, our 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 project, which is, I mean, banking, banking is, uh, is a big one. Um, it also provides us with a very, very sound legal framework that uh, is well defined and, and, and generally accepted. Um, unlike the Anstalts that we have with the shareless corporation, nobody understood that. Um, we have to, we, we, we are conforming uh, in a model and, and we've discussed Aave in, in the past as a, as a market maker. Aave is also a DAO. I mean, there's a lot of these DAOs that, um, that, that are able to integrate into centralized exchanges and, and various different entities that we we can't play in right now because of our current structure. Uh, this also provides empowerment. So large token holders can 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 participate in governance as well as uh, all token holders can vote. Now this provides us certainty going forward and how we can operate and, and uh, provides our project with the clear direction and the clear yeah, certainty to be able to open up those accounts with various different entities that we need to to be able to operate. On to the next, please. So Steering Committee and Leadership Alliance have been added to this team here. Um, a lot is it uh, everybody else you guys are very familiar with. If we move to the next, this this is this is essentially genuine Switzerland um, today uh, providing operations and some direction. But if we move to the next slide, we are, as you can see, there are open spots here for new members. Um, we are looking to build a, the DAO foundation and that DAO will have its own team that will be working uh, with uh, the steering committee um, to put governance proposals together uh, and support the growth of load 
uh, and that group will be running independent of the steering committee, um, making sure that checks and balances are, are made across the board. And this group can will be growing. We will look to add community, more community managers. Um, if you guys are interested in being involved, there's there's definitely a, a open positions on the DAO for for uh, fresh fresh perspectives and 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 new ideas. On to the next one. And so as we wrap. Um, the futures we see the future as gold. Uh, the future of gold and silver is being very promising. We're, we're talking to a lot of groups in the industry that, um, uh, uh, namely in the stablecoin space, that are looking to divest from fiat because they're concerned that uh, of 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 a, a mass devaluation of of um, the, specifically the American dollar. And so what we're seeing is even these fiat box stablecoins are looking to divest from fiat and get into gold and silver. And so this is this is writing on the wall that we're in the right space. Maybe we were a little early at the game, but we've got the technology today that we can implement solutions rather than custom build from scratch. And that de-risks our that de-risks the development initiatives and allows for us to scale smart. Um, and so through this, we will be implementing a multi-chain approach. So Shiba Inu uh, is coming on board as well as Avalanche to support those tokens. Yet again, the need for liquidity is even greater when you have two additional tokens trading on decentralized exchanges on the, Shiber on the Shibarium network. Now we need to seed more liquidity. And so there are reasons why we are tranching certain allocations of funds for different initiatives, and they are adhering to best practices for blockchain technology. Uh, next, next. Oh, we, yeah. Now let's go into the next slide. Um, so another solution that Genuine is going to be providing. So Genuine is going to be taking a a different approach. It's all regulatory, and it's going into the regulate regulatory regulated space. Um, and and what Genuine is going to provide is its infrastructure uh, that it has to build in order to support that regulated space to load as a product. And that isn't just potentially a wallet and a card program. That's the vaulting and the proof of reserve infrastructure. Uh, that's that 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 we can that Genuine has to provide anyways and can be offered as a service um, to to the load community. And so this proof of reserve will use four different eight entities that are not part of our our group that we've already kind of discussed prior. Um, we've got Profits Plus. We've got uh, a, a group called Chainlink, which provides on-chain data. We've got a group called the Network Firm, which provide reports uh, and reporting uh, and cross-reference the uh, vaulting infrastructure, the vaulting numbers with the uh, with the on-chain data. Um, and then you've got the vaulting network itself, and and the vaulting network uh, is 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 a, look is Brinks. Uh, if we move to the next slide, so this product essentially provides proof of reserves for that 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 makes sure that the numbers in the, uh, the 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 blockchain tokens that represent AGX and AUX are backed by physically vaulted uh, product in in a vault somewhere in the world, and so. Um, we use our we're, we're going to be working with Brinks to provide that service to us. Um, and Brinks obviously is a global player in the security space. They have uh, they have infrastructure um, around the world and they're very well suited to provide not just uh, storage, but also uh, uh, redemption services to be able to deliver gold back to customers uh, in, in, in an insured format. Next slide. We'll also be coming up with a new dashboard um, that'll be integrated into the wallet, and that dashboard will speak to the silver, gold supplies, the physical reserves that we've got. Um, that is a dashboard, yet again, provided by Genuine. Genuine's providing that to all of its clients as well that it will be working with. Next slide. Uh, our partners are changing. There's a whole bunch of new partners here uh, that, that that will be coming to 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 that will be will be working with including fireblocks they're the biggest in the institutional custodial provider or institutional wallet provider on the planet uh chainlink uh they're they're uh, the oracle that we've discussed the network firm uh all of these groups and nuve is our payment payment processor all of these groups are strategically uh have been strategically selected to provide certain value to our group um uh, that we can't do alone so um, yeah, next slide. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mark. 
Um, uh, Humberto, do we? Uh, do you want to uh, continue with uh, some views of the new uh, website? Is that uh, ready to go? Can we take a look at that? Um, or Cedric, did you have any comments to make? Uh, from read uh, the project uh, really have a good evolution and uh, now we will focus on the liquidity side to to permit to have a very nice uh, liquidity inside gold inside silver inside the load token and it will come very soon so these are some of the uh, slides and images from the website it's a work in progress but uh, it's going uh, I believe it's going uh, live uh, today. So we encourage you to visit the, uh, the new website at lod3.fi. Uh, Mark, uh, Ian, do we want to uh, look at the uh, at the roadmap? Um, do you have a document there, Mark, to share on the roadmap? Yeah, yes, Humberto, uh, are you on and are you able to? I, I've sent it in your Telegram. Do you want to uh, pull that up? If not, I can hear. Uh, Ian, do, do we want to cover? We want to cover exit as well. While while Hum, Hum is pulling that up, um, do you want to we want to talk about how this allows for the exit and the true liquidity in the market? With uh, well, the the resources of the team is going to be. Um, Re refocused on liquidity now over the next couple of quarters. And so um, that's really going to be the primary focus is uh, bringing more in the way of liquidity, more users and um, larger, larger groups. So that that's what the roadmap is calling for. So the, a lot of the technical infrastructure um, and the sunsetting of legacy tech is now behind us. So we're going with we clear, development future and, and liquidity is going to be and I, I think it's important to emphasize our meeting with the uh, the, the sheep um team a couple of days ago was was so much clearer because we have a, a clear tokenomics pathway um it was received very well and these are the type of groups and communities you know it's over 100 million people need to understand the full story from a to z uh, we can't go to the market with a, a story that goes from A to Y and we haven't got the ending. Um, it, it's, it's problematic. So they understand where, where we, we, what we have now uh, and, and how they can push it forward. We have a clear plan with them. Um, we've got a couple of documents, a couple of two-page documents we need to supply, and we will be reconvening with that group next week and uh, moving things uh, forward. So... Uh, Please uh, stay tuned for, for that. Uh, Hum, are we able to uh, display the roadmap? Great. I don't know if we can uh, get that. Can we get that a little larger? I don't know if everybody can see. Oh, great. So, uh, uh, Mark, Ian, do you want to uh, run through? Yeah, I think if Mark wants to go through it. Yeah, yeah I think I, I can take this on. So so if we start here at the Q, this this uh, last quarter here, we've had a lot of uh, success and delivered a lot of milestones. So the protocol announcement was the first. We've done the split, um, the, the, the uh, token split to 10x. Um, we plan to modify the bin liquidity, uh, get into vesting staking and release the vesting and staking features and integrate those into the wallet. Uh, we've uh, written and are uh, imminently going to be deploying the new white paper. So that has been written. It's just uh, getting finalized and should be out today, I believe, if not uh, over the weekend. Um, 
and then uh, we've got the new website that's also uh, just going through its last round of reviews and should be live over the next day or two as well. So this is pretty exciting stuff for us because we are obviously coming up to the end of the quarter here. Um, so as we come into the next quarter, we've got a lot uh, of work to do from the governance reskinning of the wallet to support the ability for users to be able to stake their tokens uh, or receive those vote tokens and to be able to to, uh, to exercise their, their right to vote under this new framework um, on those governance proposals and on the allocation of funds and where those funds are being distributed. Uh, we've got the rewards generator that's to launch that will allow for those six revenue streams to come online. Of course, not every one of those revenue streams will be online immediately because some of them have to be developed. As you see on Q4, we've got the card program that that they will be launched uh, and, and revenue streams will go online as they are developed as per this uh, this roadmap here. Um, we've got exchange prioritization. We would like to get on uh, centralized exchanges. Uh, we would like to see the liquidity to see trading volume on those exchanges. Uh, and, and that would start with a single exchange, of course, but the plan would be to go on multiple exchanges in this both centralized as well as uh, decentralized space. So uh, Zave is a, a good example of a decentralized exchange. They are a, uh, or, or AMM, automatic market maker, uh, automated market maker, sorry. They are specifically a commodities exchange. So this is a place where, where you get commodities. Uh, this wouldn't necessarily be the end of it though, because we also have the Shibarium, ShibaSwap, uh, AMM that we would need to, to get listed on as well. Um, we're gonna get the uh, voting, that we're gonna implement the voting mechanism in, in this, I mean, as we discussed the governance wallet as well, we'll be implementing features in the wallet and we'll be issuing the tokens. Um, and then at the end here of uh, the Q3, um, we'll be looking to uh, support cold storage on MetaMask. So this provides a greater security for tokens that are that are um, uh, in, in users' wallets. They'll be able to pull them offline so that they are much, much more protected. In uh, Q4, uh, there's a lot going on. We'll be uh, launching the proof of redemption uh, in tandem with Genuine. Uh, we'll be launching the dynamic vaulting protocol, the proof of reserves, uh, the dynamic vaulting protocol, the redemption of the that that, that, that is all tied into the proof of reserves, uh, and that is the redemption for the physical product or or for, for fiat. Um, we will be forking a protocol called Aave. And what Aave provides is lending and borrowing. So once we've forked that protocol, we'll be configuring it into our wallet to support lending and borrowing features and functionality that will allow for users to, to use their AGX and AUX essentially, or other tokens potentially as collateral that they would then be able to unlock other additional tokens to, to uh, a of AGX or AUX in the respective token um, so that so that you have access to um, you, the, the users would be able to keep their AGX and AUX and then uh, use uh, providing greater liquidity so that they can actually operate or, or operationalize other assets that the, the assets that they borrowed against. Um, then we've got the multi-party computation wallet updates. So this is much greater security upgrades. Uh, and then we are looking at launching our safe Goodwill smart contracts that will allow for the card program to be implemented. And this is a first of kind uh, smart contract. Uh, all of these card programs today, the way that they work is that you sell your cryptocurrency at the point where you transfer the funds to the card. So it's a prepaid card and you're funding the, the card, but you have to sell your crypto. The way that we've structured the smart contract and that are going to be developing it uh, is such that you will actually be able to retain your silver or gold tokens, your AGX or AUX, right up until the point where you spend those assets. So you are just locking those funds to the card program. And once they've been locked to the pro the, the smart contract, you can spend those funds, but you retain uh, the silver and gold. You don't have to settle at that point. Uh, and you can always pull them back. So you can always reclaim those those uh, that AGX and AUX from the smart contract in the event that you didn't want to spend them or didn't want to withdraw them at the ATM machine uh, or spend them in a in a in a in via the Visa network. 
Uh, and on to next year, um, we're still working on a lot of what's to come next year, but there's some really exciting stuff. Um, we've got the app store listings for both of our, uh, or sorry, for the wallet, as well as um, which, which would be on both app stores. So we're looking at the Apple and the Google store. Um, and we've got the uh, a basket currency, a load three DAP basket currency. So we're looking at creating a, a further stable ver stable coin that that will blend various different other assets in in a into a into a basket, thus creating hopefully a greater hedge um, against uh, uncertainty. Um, and so those could be more than one basket currency. It could be a single one. We're still working on that. It is a, a little ways out here. So that's in design, but uh, there is a lot more to come. And uh, we're excited to release more of the roadmap. Uh, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves because obviously we've got an ambitious schedule here and we have a lot of deliverables to uh, to, to nail out over the next year. But um, yeah, very exciting times, lots to come. Um, and, and we would love your support uh, in helping us realize this vision. Great. Thanks, Mark. Um, <clears throat> referring to, I saw a question come up. I, I don't know who it was from. It said uh, Tether and Alloy. Um, I think we should touch on that because um, during our sheep meeting, um, everybody from the sheep side thought how positive this was, you know, such a, a large platform like, such as USD, USDT, I mean, the largest platform, um, $65 billion a day in trading. Um, would would put the spotlight on precious metals. So we developed a similar concept a couple of years ago for El Salvador, basically a basket. But remember, the alloy still is underpinned with their XAUT, which is gold backed. And uh, um, it, it's important. It, it, it shows a, a spotlight. So when we refer in the roadmap there to the basket, we, we had developed um, a concept more for a, a government uh, in, in El Salvador to use a basket currency that we call the Amiro, which would be uh, have commodities in it such as gold and silver, but also BTC for, for them. I mean, Ian, do you, do you want to touch on anything on that side, on the on the gold side for the for the XAUT? You're you're on mute. Yeah, I, I I don't think it's a good time to talk about um, XAUT. I mean, they 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 are they're start they're starting to develop their infrastructure around gold liquidity, and um, they're looking it's for right. partners. Puts yeah. it puts the spotlight on it. Um, Sheeb's team looked at it as a very good positive for us, right? And, yeah. and some people in our channels were thinking, "Oh, this is a competition. It, it's a huge market." I mean, they I think they've got some projections USDT. Uh, management, uh, you know, steering committees there look at this as a $150 billion opportunity. Um, obviously, usage around the world for USDT backed by dollars, uh, people have a problem with that. They want to see it back with gold. So the whole industry, uh, it shines a light, a positive light on it. There's room for a lot of players. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it does point to the fact that the world is starting to wake up to commodity money and digital silver and gold are starting to come on, on, on stream now. So, yeah, so that's very positive. And that's the way the sheep community sees it as well. So. Okay. Um, is there a, uh, hum, is there any other questions? I, I think we've been answering some questions here. Um, is there any that you want to highlight that we missed? Ah, uh, could you um, is this uh, is the new is the new wallet that are we we're on track for launch today by what midnight uh, European time UK time? Augusto, would you be able to walk through any of these uh, screens? You're on mute. I believe you're still on mute, Augusto. Sorry, sorry. Can no you hear problem. me now? Yes, you're loud and clear. Nice. Awesome. So here what we are looking at is uh, the, the wallet reskinning, the, the new redesign, and we are also giving a look at the best LCC section, right? What, what, 
what I, I think it, it's Umberto, right? Who is who's yes, Umberto is nice. Uh, here you will be able to see a, a set of functionalities that will allow you to first of all deposit your LTC into the vesting scheme. Uh, this uh, should be available by bit night, right? Um, UTC time, right, Martin? Uh, yeah, here, right, yeah. Umberto has already deposited his balance, his mock balance. And uh, as you see, he can see the amount of LTC he has deposited and the amount of load that he will be available to claim. He will be able to claim over this 25 month period that we have already explained on previous AMAs, right? Uh, as you see, he can already claim 29 uh, and a half load tokens, right? This is just like a mock example, right? Um, pretty much uh, this is the way that it should look. You should be able to claim, right? Once you have some claimable balance available, right? Uh, and once the transaction passes, uh, as, as of now, you should refresh to see your new balance, right? On, on this example, you will not be able to check the balance on your vault, but what, once it goes live, and you go to, to, to the vault, right? You will be able to see your load balance racing up, right? A little bit. Uh, if you reload, uh, if you refresh, sorry, uh, Umberto, uh, once you you claim, the claimable balance will be set to zero once again, right? Because now you have already claimed. Uh, and you will also have the option to uh, stake afterwards, right? Um, you will also have the option to stake your claimable balance if you want to. Now, as you see, and, and what's being pointed out is that the claimable balance is null because you have already claimed what, what you were entitled to. What, uh, and that's pretty much it. Great, thanks, sir. Uh, You're welcome. Augusto. Um, Mark, uh, anything else to add? You're on mute. No, I don't. I don't have anything else to say. I'd love uh, feedback, comments. Um, I, uh, I, I mean, we're really excited uh, about what's to come here, and um, we're we're excited about um, what it is that we're we're building and the mission and vision values back to the video, back to the the presentation, the mission vision values that we um, are 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 looking to build this ecosystem for. And so uh, we obviously need support to. Uh, get through this next uh, this next phase and and really uh, to allow for us to uh, complete the the, the vision uh, that we had uh, started back in 2017 2016 when this project started yeah um, technology has been built the the yeah. ability to do the vision is there that's important and um, this is the the day the the line in the sand was the 21st that we drew everybody stepped up and met that met that deadline and now we can focus on on liquidity and obviously liquidity uh, equivalates to exit for people who are who, who have been with us for a number of years and are, are looking for that uh, that uh, that exit and it's not been as fast as obviously people would want, but the technology exists now to allow for the, the vision and it's been built and it's here. And so now it allows us to go and focus and put this in front of people who want the, the system, who want decentralized permissionless silver and gold. And there is millions, billions who want it. And so now we can put it in front of them and get it out the door and get the system working. Uh, Ian? I Ian obviously is a lot more eloquent than myself on, on, on this uh, subject. Well, um, you know, the, the um, project has been very um, technical heavy for the last uh, five or six years. It just simply could not be built um, previously, but now with EVM and new technology, as we've mentioned on several AMAs and webinars in the past, is um, is now, uh, uh, you know, uh, enables this um, greater liquidity. And so 
the team's resources will be focused now on constructing liquidity and um, you know working within the framework of the um, you know digital asset uh, communities to build more and more uh, users and more liquidity so that that's where the focus is going to be and obviously it it requires uh, community support the there's never been a system built like load that is uh, three tokens working within the framework of smart contracts and DeFi protocols to enable the creation of micro silver and micro gold on a permissionless peer-to-peer -peer basis and so that's what the load system was originally mandated and designed to be and that's what it is now so uh, to mark's point we're very proud of you know what has been achieved um these these are technical milestones that are um you know uh, w you know worthy of um you know um, credit and 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 now it requires the community to get in behind it and make it all that it can be there are no decentralized silver and gold money systems uh, in the blockchain world that that we that we know, um, you know, Kinesis, Pax, um, e even XAUT and others are all centralized systems. They don't work with DeFi, smart contracts, lending, borrowing protocols, and um, you know, advanced smart contract infrastructure um, uh, like the load system does. And so, if from the original design, there was no humans or operations in the middle of the three token system so that's what largely has been accomplished and that's a very significant milestone in the development of the load project and so the the mandate is ongoing because um the, the world needs to be able to gain access well when the, the world needs to come to the platform the access is there and it's permissionless and um and the um purpose of the platform is is to you know um restore freedom of choice and money and independence and that's what uh, the load community is doing so martin I, I i don't have anything else to add to it um there's there's a few questions here that you i'm mean just gonna post i'm gonna post uh, a good friend of mine um yeah. described it like that um this morning i think that bangs it right on the head loads purpose um that sums it up um yeah ian posted that to myself and, and an internal team this morning i uh, i think that that says it all that that's what we've tried to build and that's what we've uh, achieved and and that that's an important statement um i think we're going to add that to some uh, um to some of our materials because it it's uh, concise and it uh, it sums it up um sorry uh um what exactly will happen can be done with agx tokens in current load wallet on the sys rolex um ian mark i i think we need to explain what that purpose was because of the the sunsetting of 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 the sys of the sys coin and having to move it over onto rolex um if, yeah sys coin as an organization sunset the uxto uh layer and moved everything to uh, layer two, which is um, similar to Arbitrum and, and some of the other layer two uh, networks. And so um, they asked us to move all the SIS uh, UXTO SPT tokens over to Rolex. And so the, the team created the move feature. And I believe over 50% of the original SPT tokens have moved uh, over to the Rolex layer. And um, that uh, move feature has been sunset now and so anybody that's still stuck on spt is invited to file a claim and um and then they manually can be transferred so that's a sort of part of you know the way the blockchain has gone and when a network decides to migrate to another advanced um, protocol or evm you know the token holders need to um make that move and so that's what's happened and that's why, so uh, Rolex liquidity will be stood up on Pegasus uh, in the coming weeks. And, and that's the idea that uh, we're working from. Will all of these projects be easy to navigate uh, specifically for people that are, are not technical? Well, uh, Prez, I, I would, I, I use this example a lot. I mean, I don't know how old you are, but 
um, some of us remember using email in the 90s, it was pretty difficult when it first came out. Um, it, uh, and I can see Augusto smiling because he was born in the 90s. Um, it was, it was difficult, to, uh, difficult to use and then interfaces developed and made it a lot easier. Interfaces in, in blockchain and decentralized ledger were extremely complicated only 10 years ago. Now they're becoming a lot easier to use. So I think the answer is it's racing along at tremendous speed. Web3 wallets currently there's around 300. There's probably 3,000 in the in the in the building development stage by 2026. You know it's just going to get easier and easier to interact with the tech. Uh, that that's that's how I feel. I don't know if there's any Augusto maybe more qualified. Yes, we uh, fortunately the crypto environment as a whole is being developed at a at a very very fast pace and we come across with the solutions that we need by doing a lot of research, right? Uh, it takes a lot of effort. Uh, unfortunately, we are um, we are uh, finding the solutions and we are developing on top of the solutions that we find, right? So it's a very collaborative uh, space, right? And this uh, encourages us to uh, keep on growing, right? Yeah, thanks, Augusto. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. On the, on the load uh, card, we have information on that. We did touch on it here, Robert, but uh, um, we'll be posting information. And we can send out information if you want to contact uh, support. We can give you our our roadmap on on how the card would be uh, developed. Um, one one thing I think, if we can give the briefest view before this next question um, from our friend Rick Julian. Um, um, uh, Augusto, could you touch on the, the fact of the split and the UI on certain pricing oracles, how that is not displaying correctly outside of us? This is independent pricing oracles that would have an upgrade to their UI regarding our split from the 18 decimals to 17. I, I don't know, just a brief overview of that. Yes, no, basically what would, has been going on is that we made an upgrade on, on the tokens to, to execute the 10 to 1 split, right? But um, unfortunately, the, some UIs have not made the corresponding adjustment to their information on which other, UI, other UIs I are feeding from, right? Mm -hmm. But fortunately, we already have uh, contacted, the, for instance, the, the network explorers for them to take into account these changes, right? So they are promoting and they are um, and they are um, uh, in the way of fixing the, these these things actually I received uh, uh, some information from Abascan, right and they they have uh, taken this into account and they will be uh, solving this by by the end of the day as far as I as I know so uh, oh, it's a matter of UI infrastructure which is completely unrelated to the smart contracts right? But the, the migration to the correct information will be done in the very next few days. Yeah. Um, thank you. So that was news to us as well. So Averscan have got back to you. And so mm -hmm. that starts the ball rolling for other other UI to be corrected. Yes. And uh, we get, um, uh, we get uh, some answers on that. Um, Mr. Uh, Rick Julian, uh, please review again for us who gets to vote. Those who, who state yes, how about this? Who vests the LTC? Will we see how many total votes are available? I'm going to have to kick that back to you, Augusto, of, yes. of how we visualize that. Thank you. Yes. So basically, the idea here is that uh, when, when you deposit your LTCs, then you are entitled to receive load tokens, right? But in order to vote, you then have to stake those load tokens, right? Either on the vesting program or on the reward generator, which will be launched uh, soon as well, right? So uh, only those who stake their load balances are able to vote, right? Uh, and the amount of total votes we, we could easily display on, on, on the wallet or somewhere, uh, the amount of total available votes, right? Based on the amount of uh, load uh, balance uh, staked, right? Uh, but only the ones who stake their their load balances are able to vote. Um, 
Thank you. Hopefully that was clear. Gerardo, I asked before I need to invest in a low tokens, a program where I can withdraw. Um, yeah, I mean, I, sorry, I think I answered this. Um, it, it's midnight tonight, so your UK time. So you'll see um, how to do it in the wallet. It's it's pretty intuitive. Um, but as, as Hum said, there will be uh, videos and, and uh, training material on this. And so we'll walk you through that process. But once you see the interface on the on the new design wallet, um, I would encourage you to uh, to have a go yourself and, and work it through to see the process. Uh, is that good advice, uh, good practice, uh, Augusto, to to play with the wallet and, and stake a token in to see how the process works? I think uh, I think Augusto may be frozen. Um, his internet may have dropped. Um, I'll come back to that. Uh, could could we flip to another question? Um, uh huh. Showing so join load from the very beginning to keep up with the changes while backward compatibility is pushed down by new developments. This creates a lot of confusion, risk, and gaps. Increased challenges for us and the customer for support. Um, I believe that yeah, that that has been the case, but now we are here, and so hopefully this makes it clearer. Um, we've achieved the goal and we move forward on, on the goal as, as posted here. Uh, how do we see the price per LTC if we decide to claim? Um, I don't know. Mark, can you? Would I you can do? explain if you want. Oh, thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. So um, when you vest your token LTC, your LTC is burned. So you, you cannot... Uh, see the price of the LTC because if you claim your LTC, you will receive load load token on Avax. So it's not the same token. Great, thank you. Um, sorry. Uh, so, how long do you still expect it to take before I can go to a store and buy groceries using? AUX and AGX. Um, this is a Mark question. Mark, what what do we have on the time frames here of build out? It's it's more of a it's more of a budget. Uh, we've got the we've got the partners to do this. Uh, we're waiting for some of our larger commitments to come through. Um, can you add to that? I mean, yeah, this would be through the card program. Um, so the direct, the easiest way in which we can support this is via the card program, the Goodwill Smart Contract that we're developing. I believe that it's scheduled for Q4 of this year. Um, the idea of being able to spend it in an integrated point of sale uh, via the from a from a vendor that has opted in. It's a way harder play. It's a way longer term journey, and it's uh, to, it'll take. I mean, that 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 that's the kind of budget that you need uh, billions in order to to implement. But the card program um, should go live, assuming we are able to seed the liquidity associated with the card program, allow for our AGX AUX token holders to be able to um, purchase the card um, and and load their tokens onto the card. We do have that slated for Q4. Of course, that's subject to uh, the ability for us to see the liquidity associated with that card program. So um, we'll need some support yep. from the, the program or from there, the there is, there is another angle to this as well, Chris, um, is uh, the liquidity aspect for us means uh, listing on centralized exchanges. We do have a great contact via the Shoot team with Crypto.com. Crypto.com has uh, six cards, six cards available. Uh, different levels of staking visas. Um, and so we list AGX, AUX uh, through the contacts on a centralized exchange like crypto.com. You are effectively able to start using your AGX and AUX. You, you'd, have to, you'd have to trade them out in, in the platform and then add to the wallet, uh, add to your card wallet in crypto.com. But effectively, you are spending at that time. Um, John, uh, is there a referral affiliate program to share with friends? That is, is we, we did, we developed it once before. Uh, we are looking at that again. And I don't know, we don't have it on the roadmap. Is that correct, Mark? But it's something that we've, we've discussed. The, the which program? 
sorry, the referral affiliate. Program. Uh, there will be a referral affiliate program that will be relaunched. Yes, yeah. um, it's not on the roadmap, but uh, we we have already been discussing it, and there is, it's it, it will come likely. I mean, it, it's it's quicker to stand up than than the card program for sure. So we can we can probably stand that up uh, um, this summer. Um, the, the, I think uh, Rick had a follow-up. Um, oh, Karen, my husband Travis uh, is unable to listen to this live, so I'll speak for him. We appreciate all the hard work each invested years uh, on assets for successful life. We knew it would be easy. Um, nice message. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's uh, it's been difficult. Um, the initial load tokens that we want and diluted by three into the, these new load tokens. It's, Yes, that's that's correct. That that has taken place. That's that split has taken place, Nicholas. I think that they're not diluted though. There's no dilution. So twenty four million is the outstanding out of a max supply of seventy seven million. Um, so I think it's actually twenty six million that's been that that, that are outstanding. Um, and and we haven't diluted. So the seventy seven million was the max supply prior to this. Is this right. was the max supply in twenty eighteen? Um, the max supply is going up to seventy seven million. That that total outstanding token allocation is going up to 260 million, I believe. Um, and so, and so there's been no dilution whatsoever. The 10 X is in, yes, it's in the millions, uh, but the, the, the 10 X is uh, a split. Um, and 77 million was the total number of tokens that have been minted and are stored in treasury. The vast majority of those tokens yet again are going to be going to or a significant allocation of those are going to be going to the low DAO that will require vote voting in order to allocate. Um, some of those tokens, as you saw in that table, have been pre-allocated, but the DAO gets to vote on where that allocation goes to start. Once those allocated tranches have been used, um, potentially additional tokens will be created, but um, that are will will be issued to support operations. But uh, at the end of the day, this with this, we, we had 77 million was the max supply um, prior to. So this, yeah. this, that that's not changed. There's no dilution event. Yeah. So yeah. Sorry for a good. Yeah. Thank you, Mark, for clarifying that. The um and, and obviously as we've talked about with uh, crypto communities we're talking to, um it's uh, it's in the price point where they operate. Um, supporting a six dollar and seventy cents, six dollar fifty odd cent. Uh, load token is, is just not viable. Uh, Cedric, uh, no, the new wallet is an update of the load. Order. Okay, that's an answer. Yeah. Is the wallet on loadwallet.com being replaced by, if so, no, that is not the case. It would still be accessed via loadwallet.com. I think um, Hum, Rick, Julian had a follow up. Uh, I didn't get it. It flew past me. Uh, hum, could you bring up Rick Julian's? Uh, I, I can read it. So Rick's follow up. We vest LTC, all of our LTC immediately, but stake LT 4% per month. How does that difference impact voting? Um, I'm not sure i understand that question um uh, rick you you can uh, follow up with me personally on telegram i can get you an answer to that um uh, hum are we uh, are we done with i oh, know questions i can see more are you still uh, changing the questions up i'm better I don't know if I'm very still with us. I'll uh, mark Dion question. I wanted and want digital silver tokens, not governance tokens, LTC. What's the simplest way to get AGX using the LTC token? Talk slowly. I'm French. Well, Mark, no, uh, I would refer sorry. you to Cedric. Um, Cedric, do, do you want to answer Mark's question? Sure, sure. Uh, I already did it inside, oh, okay. uh, inside the chat. Okay. And uh, my response was uh, you need to pass... Uh, SLTC uh, through the vesting contract, and after when we he will receive the load AVAX, he can sell load AVAX to for RGX. So it's the easiest way to do it. Okay, I think we've sold Rick. Uh, he gave me an okay. We can have a chat, Rick, on uh, on Telegram. Um, I believe um, 
I believe we've come to a sort of natural conclusion here. Um, is there some wrap up words you'd like to say, Ian, Cedric, Mark? I think the the path is open and just beginning now. Tech is in place now. It's the, the real beginning of the project. Thank you. Yeah, all the tech stack is in place. Um, the uh, trading and the DEXs and uh, uh, smart contracts, everything is operational. Uh, the new website will continue to have um, um, answers for uh, and 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 connecting FAQs and and all that sorts of stuff. So there's there'll be lots of new information available for the community. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Mark. I'm good. I've said a lot on this call, so I'm uh, I'm I'm good. I, I am excited about what uh, the future brings. I'm excited about the challenges that are still to be faced, and I'm excited about the the, the, the roadmap that we've got here. So uh, I feel yeah. like really really well positioned here for. I mean, the technology is where we need it to be in order to yeah. be successful at doing what we're doing here. And so um, because of that, I'm excited, um, and and hopefully some of that excitement uh, can can be passed on to the community here. Yeah, I, I hope it resonates with the community that, you know, this is not a commercial enterprise in the classic sense. There's no shareholders here. So how do you build a decentralized silver and gold money machine? Well, it took a long time and your patience is appreciated. And um, it's our belief. Uh, it's been my lifetime's honor to be, uh, have been able to work within the mandate to, to take up, um, you know, some of the uh, engagement that was required in order to build this thing. And um, uh, really the thanks goes to the community for all the support and patience. And now it's your, it's the people's money system, you know, and we can honestly say this is for the people, uh, by the people and, um, and, and the, you know, all of the rewards are yours as a load token holder. That's what the reward generator is all about. And so um, it's, uh, it's, it's happening now. We're, we're rolling it out. Great. Thank you guys for the closing words. Thanks everybody for, for attending and uh, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Thank you. And uh, we're blasting off. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.